It's Wyvern here with another bit of Total War Warhammer 2 Quick Magic Gameplay. This time around I'm playing as the Lizard Man against the High Elf, led by Pad Thai on the map, the Black Forests. And uh, this time around we are definitely ditching the monsters, we're ditching the uh, Temple Guard, the Saurus Warriors, or at least some of the monsters, uh, the Temple Guard, the Saurus Warriors, and those sort of heavy hitters, in uh, favor of a very uh, light infantry set of trick build with a whole bunch of skinks, so definitely going with a very skink heavy theme here. And uh, let's see how it goes down in, uh, in actual practice. And right off the bat, as we're going in, um, you can see that, of course, I did have to bring some monsters. Uh, skinks on their own have very low combat stats. You don't have any armor piercing options, uh, that sort of stuff. So you do need to bring some sort of support units uh, to provide that. So. Right off the bat, of course, for my lord, uh, bringing the usual croc car. Uh, there's no real comparison. Mazda Mundi is a lot weaker. The other, um, the generic sort of um, lizard men lord is not really as cost effective as croc car. Croc are better. And uh, of course, the the um, slant, slant mage priests are pretty horrible. Uh, they might have decent spells, but they have pretty terrible uh, combat stats, and of course they're very susceptible to range fire, they're big, fat, and they have no armor, that sort of stuff. Now Karkar, of course, has very solid stats. He's coming in with Deadly Onslaught, Sacred Spawning as well, giving himself a bunch of survivability, Swiftness of Eatsel for even more survivability, uh, Cold Blooded, of course, to provide some regen, and Hand of Gods just to snipe at enemy lords. Of course, he does cause terror, he has Frenzy, uh, decent armor and built-in missile resistance of 25%, means that against High Elves, who tend to have some pretty low uh, armor-piercing missiles, uh, he's going to be very, very tanky. Now, uh, alongside him, I did bring a single Skink Priest of Beasts. Uh, he is mounted on an Ancient Stegodon, actually, rather than a normal vanilla sort of Stegodon. For those better stats, the better HP, um, poison damage uh, on the uh, darts. Uh, with He sort of has like a battery of uh, blowguns in the front, or javelins, I do believe, rather than... Um, rather, or actually, I do believe it's mobile loaders, I guess, that uh, kind of shoots in the forward cone. Um, and of course, the only I actually only brought two items on him. I brought Wild Heart and I brought a uh, good old Flock of Doom. Uh, and Flock of Doom does pretty decent against mobbed up units, which I also do tend to kind of clump up usually. Uh, so I'm definitely hoping to use this to break up Spearman blobs or uh, back backline units, that sort of stuff. And even do some okay damage against heavily armored troops. For my front line, it is entirely composed of skink cohorts with javelins. These guys are very heavily veteraned up, much like when you're doing a goblin build in Warhammer 1. Uh, I figured that you would definitely want to invest a bit in their uh, stats. Um, this means that they're going to be able to get their missiles off a little, just a little bit quicker, uh, expend that ammunition, and then charge in, and uh, their melee defense and melee attack, while certainly not amazing, will be much more passable. Uh, behind them, we do have two units of Croxigors, which are kind of helping them by stiffing them up, providing some support, and uh, if they mingle in with the skink cohorts, they should definitely mitigate the damage they're taking, and of course with their decent armor and the fact that High Elf Archery, like we discussed, has very low armor piercing, these guys should perform pretty well. My, then finally, here zoning away, are three units of Chameleon Skinks, who are there to snipe away at enemy lightly armored targets, enemy flying lords, uh, that sort of stuff. These guys have very short range, but they do cause poison damage, they do have decent DPS, uh, though their actual damage per shot is very low. The damage per or 10 seconds is very nice, and uh, their ammunition is okay. Uh, they're also not absolutely atrocious in melee, so if needed, they, I can definitely use them against, say, the Light Archers. Um, for my opponent, he did decide to go pretty elite heavy build. You definitely see this a fair amount of the time when you're playing as um, the uh, lizard, uh, the lizard men against the elves. Uh, front line composed entirely of white lines of Krace. These guys, of course, have armor piercing, decent melee stats with master martial prowess, uh, and um, pretty solid armor. They actually don't trade that well with Saurus Warriors, but they do cost the same. And uh, they're obviously with a decent armor and built-in missile resistance of, I do believe, 30%. These guys are pretty resistant to anything that the lizards can throw at them. Uh, because the lizard men, of course, lack armor piercing range damage as well. Behind them, my opponent does have a single unit of Phoenix Guard. Phoenix Guard with martial mastery, fear, massive physical resistance armor, and all that sort of stuff are absolutely brutal against lizards. Uh, especially when stacked on top of the fact that they do have a charge defense against all. Um, and uh, that just makes them very, very powerful. And behind that, two units of Lothar and Seagar with shields. I think that is a bit of an interesting pick, though. Definitely makes them a very potent melee unit, uh, or hybrid melee unit. Um, the shields, I think, are a little bit of an overkill, since usually you can just outrange lizard men shooting units uh, very, very heavily with uh, Lothar and Seagar, uh, much less archers. And over here, we can just see a vanilla unit of archers, most likely just because my opponent had some points left over. But as Lord, my opponent did bring a princess, and interestingly enough, uh, rather than on a star dragon, this is actually the usual, the low end sun dragon. And uh, you can see that with the lower stats and armor, HP, and all that sort of stuff. Um, 
Alongside that, a single Flame Spire Phoenix. Of course, this can drop Terror Bombs. It doesn't have built-in physical resist due to uh, its uh, one of its effects here. Or attuned to magic provides uh, physical damage resistance when it, your mana is or over um, 50%, which I do believe is every time if you don't bring a Spellcaster. Uh, he also, my opponent also brought a Noble on an Eagle, which interestingly enough takes away the Armor Piercing effect on the Noble, which is a little unfortunate. Uh, but the melee stats on it are very solid. And then you have Swordmaster of Hoeth, who with their bonus against infantry, bronze shields, and armor piercing are just going to be an absolutely monstrous unit against my um, troops. Obviously, I'm not counting on my skinks to win in a melee fight, so definitely uh, they're there as a support tool for the Crocs scores. Or they're there to tank for the Croc scores, my lord, and that sort of stuff. You can see I'm pushing forward and uh, just trying to get into position to kind of pick away at my opponent. I want to spend all my javelins before engaging in close quarters, uh, because if I don't, I'm going to be in some deep trouble. You can see the skinks are already being sniped away at by the princess. That's okay. She's not really... It's a, basically a waste of ammo to snipe away at skinks, because there's just so many of them. And over here, uh, you can see Crocar is pushing forward, just trying to get some early damage. You can see I'm, I'm throwing javelins at these guys. It's not going to do amazing damage, um... Okay damage, but these guys with their built-in physical resist, or uh, range resist, and um, all that sort of stuff. These guys are going to be pretty tanky. Now over here you can see Krokar does dive into the white lines, does a bit of damage. Now I'm just trying to pull him away from the Phoenix Guard. Uh, and you can see I'm still picking away with the Javelins, but you can see they're not doing the most amazing work ever. Uh, in the meantime, my Croxagors are pushing forward, because except the Phoenix Guard, my opponent doesn't really have much anti-large, um, at least not in the front line. I do ca overcast a... Um, I do overcast a... Uh, Flock of Doom over here, and you can see it's doing decent damage even to the Phoenix Guard. And the meantime, Krokar does disengage and kind of uh, fall back. Over here, unfortunately, my Flame Spire, the Flame Spire Phoenix is diving in on the Chameleon Skinks, doing a decent amount of damage. You can see the Sun Dragon incinerates a few Skinks here, but really, who cares? They're Skinks. Um, they're a dirt cheap unit. You can see these poor Phoenix Guard are getting sniped down. Uh, as Krokar just simply just walks away uh, with the help of Itzel. Now, unfortunately, these guys are going to get in on top of my Skinks, but the Skinks have basically spent most of their ammo. You can see over here in the meantime, the uh, Skink Priest is kind of maneuvering around, and Krokar will be able to pick at these guys. The Dragon in the meantime has dove down upon the Crocs, of course, and it's going to be doing quite a bit of hurt to him, but uh, there are definitely no pushovers. You can see the Crocs of have routed out the White Lines of Kreis, who unsupported by, are not really effectively supported by the Archers, and lacking help from the Phoenix Guard are just not a real good threat to large units like that. Over here, the Skinks are collapsing on the Phoenix Guard, which is not going to go well for him because their damage output against such units is miserable. Over here, though, Krokar has jumped upon the Princess and is going to tear through her very, very effectively. Unfortunately, you can see that my Croxagores are rampaging, though I do drop a Cold-Blooded on them. That's actually going to heal them enough to pull them out of Rampage mode. Uh, in the meantime, these White Lines of Grace have been terrified and they're going to route off. Over here, you can see these uh, Lothar and Seaguard are actually being sniped down by the uh, Focus Fire from the um, Chameleon Skinks. Over here, another uh, Flock of Doom has gone down, and you can see it's actually doing quite a bit of damage, uh, also helped by the fact that my opponent is not moving out of the AoE. Uh, you can see it's taken off, off about a good 20% of the dam of the HP on this unit, maybe, maybe not 20%, maybe like 15% on this, this unit. Um, you can see definitely those guys are getting mauled, the Croxagors have busted through. Uh, these Croxagors have actually healed up enough, so I'm going to be able to commit them um, to more backline operations. In the meantime, Croxagors are just trying to rampage around with Sacred Spawning of Zodal and kind of break my opponents. Over here, uh, you can see the Phoenix Guard, of course, are just smushing through the poor skinks, but um, I'm able, gonna be able to collapse on them, flank them from the side over here with the skink beasts. Uh, them, they themselves, the Phoenix Guard, once they lose martial uh, mastery, especially with the fact that the skinks are so heavily ventured up, uh, they're actually going to struggle at hitting the skinks consistently. So while they're and the skinks with their massive unit size are actually going to be pretty tanky, if not hitting hard in return. Um, you can see they've only picked off a few models themselves. Now, over here though, the Phoenix Guard has been smashed into by the King Priest of, Hev of uh, Beasts, which is going to route these guys off. You can see another uh, spell over here is going down, another overcast Flock of Doom. Simply able to just spam this spell against enemies like this, and it's doing a decent amount of damage even though it's Sword Masters of Hoeth. Certainly nothing amazing, but, but definitely respectable. Over here, the Noble is diving in on the Crocs, of course, which is a less than ideal situation. He doesn't have armor piercing, really. And uh, as he is mounted on an eagle, he's going to be a very, very juicy target for Krokgar, uh, who has, his, of course, his bonus against large. He has his... Um, though it actually looks like I'm not targeting him, and I do actually retarget Krokgar to attack the uh, princess. In the meantime, these archers have kind of routed off. They are trying to rally. You can see I'm trying to uh, push in these uh, Chameleon Skinks to snipe away. Of course, Chameleon Skinks have a huge physical res or a range resistance, and uh, th that was definitely helping him in that shootout against the Lothan Seaguard. And now I'm actually using these guys in melee to simply chase the Phoenix Guard off the field. They're obviously not going to do great against the Phoenix Guard, but just the fact that they're going to be keeping him running is going to route him off. But you can see the Princess does get sniped by the Hand of Gods last second, and that's going to be the end of the game. So, definitely a bit of a, a brutal game, I think. You can definitely see some of the Skinks had a pretty awful time of it. Um, obviously, um, with the investment in 
levels or veterancy on the skinks. They're actually not that cheap of a unit. They uh, were each unit was fairly exp expensive, sitting at around 500, I do believe, a unit, uh, five to 600 per unit. Um, so definitely, a, they were kind of expensive uh, for what they'd offered, but uh, they can definitely deliver a decent amount of punch. They um, the javelins weaken my opponent um, enough for the croc scores and croc cards to just kind of shock charge shock them off the field. Uh, the chameleon skins themselves uh, definitely help pressure my opponent's flanks. Um, obviously, this the damage output here d definitely came down to the efforts of the mag mage and the croc scores and the fear and terror from croc are the mage and all that that sort of stuff. But it's important to remember that the skins, of course, weakened my opponent up. Uh, they were very cheap and soaking, and they were soaking my opponent's troops. Uh, Swordmasters of Hoeth got for a very long time bogged down by a unit of skinks, uh, who, despite not trading well with them. Uh, just tied them down and wasted their time. Um, and the poor white lines of Kray simply got routed off for very little gain by the Croxagors, uh, and um, the Skinks with their high melee defense, once they whittled down the Phoenix guard to take away their mastery, martial mastery, they were doing well. Something interesting, now the Flamespire Phoenix, interesting pick. I think Flamespire Phoenix is something people don't really think about, is Flamespire Phoenixes are pretty terrible at doing damage. Honestly, both of the Phoenix models are. Uh, they're much a much better unit at simply, sh if you need to terror out enemies. They can, they're a very cheap terror bomb, is, what they, uh, is the way I see them. Um, because they're very mobile, they can obviously get an easy rear charge, uh, and they cause terror. But their actual damage output is only good if you're either using their spells against incredibly clumped up squishy targets, or if you're getting, um, I guess, fighting a single target that's susceptible to fire. Honestly, they're not very good against actually dealing damage. It's not really the niche, in my opinion, of the Phoenix. Um... You can definitely see the first kills go, uh, with the exception of my opponent's lords and uh, the swordmasters of Hoeth. Uh, his units just didn't trade very well. Uh, they killed a bit more than my than uh, of my troops than I did his, but it didn't really matter in the long run, simply because I had so much more casualties that I could absorb, and most of my tank units did stick around and were doing a okay. So definitely good game to my opponent. I do think this was a fun build. I don't really think it's that viable. It's sort of like running goblins in Total War Warhammer 1, and of course we'll be seeing that in a little bit with uh, good old <laughs> Scar Snake uh, being in Mortal Empires, of course, and all that sort of stuff. We'll, we'll definitely see, I think, goblin builds and all that. But uh, I definitely think this sort of build with Skink Heavy is much more viable from... Uh, it's viable, but it's not necessarily a go-to build. But because the Lizardmen do have such nice terror and fear-causing units, it is a little more viable, I would say, than goblins. Um... Yeah, I definitely good game to my opponent. I do hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to leave a like and subscribe down below. If you have any comments, criticism, any questions about Total War Warhammer or Warhammer 2 or anything like that, I uh, just want to share your hype for Mortal Empires or whatever, be sure to post that, that down in the comments and I'll respond as soon as I can. Uh, as usual, guys, I do appreciate you all for watching and I will see you all in the next one. Wyvern out.